Okay, my name is Paul Krutzweiser. I'm the Senior Product Manager with Skyjack. I'm here today to talk to you about the newest boom lift model that we've come out with. Uh, this is a 63 AJ, SJ 63 AJ. It's a 63 foot, seven inch platform height articulating boom, engine powered, four wheel drive. Um, it's the newest boom model to the uh, boom lift family at Skyjack. We're obviously working towards expanding our, our product offering. Um, so here, I'll just walk through some of the, the standard features of this machine. Um, but as you can see, we're looking at the, uh, the turret now on the engine side. Um, <clears throat> if I open up this fiberglass cowling, we use fiberglass for a reason. The fiberglass is easy to repair. Um, damages a little bit less um, in your typical rental applications, but if you do get it, it's not going to turn into one of those awkward situations where you have to explain to your customer that they owe you $2,000 for a brand new cowling. You're able to use a little bit of Bondo, um, some sanding, and a little bit of elbow grease to get this thing back up and running, save your customer some money, save yourself some money. Uh, that's one of the big reasons why we do that. We find uh, You'll find those types of features throughout the machine where we design it with the intent of it being a rental. Um, rental asset for you. Um, on this side here we're looking at our uh, our engine side of the machine. Uh, we use a Deutz diesel engine. This is a four-cylinder Deutz diesel um, and we have our uh, power pack hydraulic pump sets uh, coming off the front. So a typical uh, piston pump uh, for your drive and then we go to a piston pump as well for your, your system uh, functions. Um, these are Eaton pumps um, that we're using. A new to Skyjack, but we're likely going to be continuing this throughout the line as we go for commonality is one of the, the big features of, of all of our Skyjack boom lifts. Um, we use a piston pump uh, instead of a gear pump on this machine. We're able to get a little bit more functionality, a little bit more um, on-demand pressure and flow uh, from the system. So that translates to a much smoother ride for the operator. Uh, easier to predict as far as the movements go, much more comfortable for the operator and end user. Uh, as far as serviceability goes, all your service components are on the outboard side of the machine. That's very important. The engine manufacturers for this horsepower range of, uh, of engines um, typically all put service components on one side as opposed to being on the top or on a mix of both sides because your service access is usually going to be in orientation like this where you have engine at uh, service level. Um, but it's also side axis only, it's not in a, uh, a chassis under a hood, um, you know, like a pickup truck or off-highway type unit. So all of your service components are, are done on one side of the machine for a reason. We make sure that that's the outboard side. The engine tray does swing out and has a gas strut, which is over center gas strut. So it'll help hold it in when the bolt is removed, um, allow you to open it up, and it'll also help hold it open while you need to, to get back there for service. Gives you a nice... Uh, work circle back there. Really the only thing you need to do on the Deutz model, um, the starter and the exhaust manifold are the only two parts that you'd be able to turn a bolt on on that side of the machine. We do offer an optional um, GM dual fuel engine. It's the GM Vortec uh, 3 liter um, engine. Gives about 82 horsepower, 85 horsepower. Um, and again, all of the service components are designed on the exact same side, so it's same fitment, same bolts you have the ability to open that tray up as well. Um, and back there, you would only have the alternator. So again, no components back there, but in case you do need to get back there, you have the ability to service it. Um, reinforced fiberglass cowling. Um, we've, we've gone to this sort of design here as opposed to being laminated in the fiberglass. It gives a little bit more rigidity as far as the cowling goes, can deal with the vibrations, um, deal with the truck transport and things like that with uh, with a lot less fatigue. Um, and of course over here we have our, our battery which is easily accessible. You can actually get at the battery itself if you had to replace it um, or the terminals if you need to jump it. Um, so a very tough situation where you have um, such a limited amount of space here. We have the option to put battery underneath at the back or behind the counterweight where it might be a little bit tougher to access so we try really hard to make sure that all your service components are easy to access so that you can check them so that you can maintain them um, so that you can replace them or service them if you need to okay now we've turned the machine around uh, rotated around so that we can get a look at the other side of the uh, of the turret 
Um, one of the things, as I mentioned, is commonality. Uh, we really try to include as much common component, as much common design throughout our product line as we can. Um, one of the things that we do on the, the 63 AJ uh, that we've brought across is we've used the same axle-based drive system. These are Dana uh, Category 1 and Category 2 class axles, more commonly found on telehandlers, front-end loaders, that type of equipment. Uh, very robust and reliable. Um, we use that again, uh, it's low maintenance, um, very reliable, good quality components that over time are going to help increase the return on investment for this product in a, in a rental fleet situation. Um, the axles are actually common part numbers with some of our other booms. So on the front axle, we're using, a, uh, we're using the exact same axle from our 66T um, telescopic 60 foot series uh, machines. And uh, on the rear axle here, we're actually using the, um, the same axle from our 46AJ, which features something unique in the industry. It's a operator controlled differential lock. So in normal situations, the machine will be four wheel drive and it'll have an open differential in the rear and a limited slip differential in the front. Um, the open differential is what the operator is able to control. So through a switch on the control box, he'll be able to select when he needs to, to lock up that axle if he's gotten himself into a situation where he's starting to lose some traction, uh, most likely mud, um, that type of situation, maybe even sand. He can hit that operator control diff lock switch, lock up the axle, and now the axle is going to provide 100% of the power to both wheels without any spinning. Um, and that's just like a, a Hummer or an off-road pickup or Jeep is going to be able to get you out of pretty much any situation you can get into. So as far as trainability goes and positive traction, you can't beat an axle-based drive system. Um, you don't see too many telehandlers getting stuck. You're not going to see too many skyjack booms getting stuck. Uh, if we open up the cowling again, fiberglass cowlings, um, we have a cowling latch which is fairly simple in design but you'll notice that it hangs down. Again, we do everything on these machines for a reason. This is a design that we've taken so that it will actually help the truck driver know whether or not the cowlings have been secured. So if he can look back in his rear view mirror see that these latches are hanging down, it's very visual that the cowling hasn't been secured, he'll be able to come out, hook it up, make sure that his load is secure while he's transporting it to the job site. Um, on this side of the machine you're going to see our tank, so we have a 30 gallon fuel tank uh, for the diesel fuel uh, with fill that goes out through the cowling, um, so it's, it's able to be filled up without actually opening up the cowling. And then next to that we have our 30 gallon uh, hydraulic tank, which has a sight gauge um, for your level. It also has a temperature gauge in the middle. Uh, so that you can monitor what your hydraulic temperature is. Um, we use a steel tank for a couple of reasons. Number one is durability, uh, but steel is also a better um, conductor of heat so it will allow the hydraulic system to dissipate heat a little bit more naturally um, than a, a poly uh, type of tank will. Um, but we also get the, the structure to be able to mount things on, um, very durable, robust. Um, and the volume itself will also help with the, with the heat as well. Um, you'll notice here that uh, we're able to keep all of the valves and components accessible. So our goal when designing and laying out the system is so that you can get a wrench on any fitting that's in here. Um, so we do do that for that specific reason where there's nothing that's going to be hitting, there's nothing that's going to be in behind another component that would need to be taken off. Uh, in order to be serviced. So you will be able to access everything, find out if you do have an issue as far as a loose fitting, maybe possibly a hydraulic leak, you're going to be able to identify that, get that fixed up without having to disassemble anything else and risk possibly creating a new problem while you're fixing uh, an old one. Uh, so our main manifold here is, is located in the front. You'll notice you get the first glimpse of Skyjack's color-coded number wiring system, something we do on every single machine that we make since 1985. We use the exact same color and number codes on all of our equipment um, for obviously the common functions. Um, so in this case, uh, a boom lift like this would have lift and lower um, functions. Those are always going to be 13 and 14. They're always going to be orange and black on every single machine, whether it's a scissor lift, a slab lift, a rough terrain scissor. Um, or a telescopic boom and it doesn't matter the age or vintage of the machine it's going to be the same. Going to our lower control box here, pop this open and we can take a closer look at Skyjack's well-known analog based control system. So one thing you won't find in our machines will be a, a black box 
uh, or computer which is doing all the logic, all the control logic and driving the valves. Um, so what we see here is we see a hardwired machine using our standard color coded number wiring system and a whole bunch of automotive style relays. Um, very reliable, robust relays, but also very easy and accessible. So we use a lot of non-proprietary parts in our equipment. Uh, the relays is a very good example of, of that. You can actually just get relays, uh, replacement relays from a Napa or even a Walmart, um, be able to get your machine back up and running. Um, the relay system also makes it, again, fairly easy to troubleshoot. So if you do have a function that's not working specifically, let's go back to a lift function, you can trace your, trace your color code number wiring system back to that relay and you can actually test whether or not the uh, control is making a clicking sound on the relay. If it's not clicking, you know the relay's gone bad and that you don't have a bad valve, you don't have a bad wire. So you can start your troubleshooting sequence from there and actually make things fairly easy and, and quick to repair. Um, again, all steel, very robust construction for everything. We would like to keep everything nice and protected. Um, it'll last longer that way and uh, certainly more serviceable as well. As far as serviceability goes, one of the other neat things that we do on all of our uh, boom lifts is the ring gear mechanism itself does need to be serviced, it does need to be greased. Um, in a lot of cases that can become a two-man job where you're going to have one guy injecting grease into a grease fitting um, while another guy rotates the machine around. So what we do is we put a remote grease fitting on all of our booms, which is right near the control box. So we do that for that very reason where the operator can actually inject it with the grease, rotate the machine a bit, inject it with grease, get nice even coverage of the, of the grease that's needed. If you make it easy to do, it will get done. And then the machine will last longer. Okay, so we've repositioned the machine slightly here um, just to get a little bit better look at what's going on inside the turret. Uh, before I start talking about some of the main features of the boom arm. This also gives me a good opportunity to uh, talk about the tires and tire options that we offer on this machine. Uh, so this machine here has, uh, is equipped with a foam filled um, grip lug, lug type tire. Uh, we do have this tire in a non-marking uh, version as well. Because this is an articulating boom, you are going to see some indoor applications. Uh, certainly in some uh, on slab applications where you, you might be concerned about uh, about marking floors. We do have the dual fuel engine uh, which can run on propane for those types of applications as well as I mentioned before. Uh, one of the other tires that you can get, you can get this exact same tire in an air filled. Um, just the same as you can with the non-marking version. Um, and then we also offer a flotation tire or what we call a sand tire. Uh, which is really good for fine, loose material where you're worried about digging into. Um, the axle-based drive system, again, will help in those types of situations. You get a nice flotation tire on. Uh, with the positive traction that you get from an axle-based drive system, this machine will be very good in certain areas like Florida, Michigan, um, Holland, where you have a lot of loose um, type of soil and the tendency to get machines stuck. Um, on the inside of the turret itself, uh, we've got the riser section lifted up just a little bit. We can see the swing drive mechanism in here. One of the things that Skyjack does on all of our boom lift models is we have an adjustable uh, swing drive mechanism. So what I mean by that is that you can actually just undo the bolts that are holding down this housing, loosen them off, and then we have a single bolt which will allow you to essentially pry and re-shim um, that swing drive so that you can get the backlash adjustment where you need it. Just in case you've had a little bit of wear or some repositioning happen in the, in the turret um, to chassis uh, and has resulted in a little bit of backlash, you're going to be able to adjust that and you can certainly access that through the side access holes here um, from either side. One of the other things we notice in here is our transport lock bin. Um, and right down here you'll see that there's two holes uh, on the chassis so you can actually put it in a transport lock position um, with the boom completely straight. Um, the other hole allows you to offset it slightly. The reason we do that is because this machine comes in at 21,200 pounds in its base configuration allowing us to get two on a truck at uh, North American National uh, transport standards. Um, so allowing us to get two on a track is certainly going to help reduce freight costs, um, not only from the factory when you buy the equipment new, but also transport costs to and from job sites, uh, where you're going to be able to get two pieces of gear on, maximize your load, uh, get the full 44, 45,000 pounds of gross weight. Um, even if you option this machine up and take foam filled tires and the welder package, uh, welder generator package, 
um, which would be approximately our heaviest combination of options um, and heaviest combination for uh, configuration of this machine, you're still going to be able to get two on a track. You're still going to be at uh, roughly around 22,200 pounds, uh, which would get you well under that 45,000 pound um, gross weight lim load limit for most flatbed trucks. Um, Taking a closer look here at the riser, you'll notice that the riser geometry is just a little bit different. For starters, we have the boom position in, in a bit of an awkward um, configuration right now where we have the riser up, but the boom arm itself is at an angle below horizontal. Uh, this is something relatively new for the 60-foot articulating class, which gives much more freedom of motion for the boom envelope itself. So a lot more productivity. You can get in a lot more places um, with a lot less movement of uh, manipulation of various functions. So one of the key goals that we had in mind with this machine was to make it easy for the operator as far as operator comfort goes, um, positioning the machine. Certainly gonna see a lot of up and over applications with an articulating boom, so that takes a little bit of the guesswork out of it when you're able to do a lot more with a boom function or do a lot more with a riser function. Uh, one of the other ways that the riser helps out the operator is we actually have what carried over in a feature from our 46 AJ line is the true vertical rise feature. So you'll notice when the riser goes straight up and down, that back pivot point for the main boom will stay on a, on a perfectly vertical plane, uh, allowing true vertical rise. So what essentially happens is at the platform side of things, that platform is now going to act like a scissor lift and go straight up and down. Gives you a lot more predictability when you're working inside a plant uh, or perhaps working on a facade of a building doing some finish work, some glazing. You're going to be able to go from one story, one window, up or down, um, without having to reposition the jib, without having to reposition the main boom. Um, you're going to be able to do that vertical function with just the riser function only. Um, so increased productivity, a lot less uh, repositioning in the machine, um, but also a lot more confidence for the operator, a lot safer as far as his application goes, where it takes some of that guesswork out. Um, so in this configuration here, what we're actually demonstrating slightly is uh, what we call the stick boom functionality. Um, the articulating design that we have here with the open center knuckle allows us to get this below horizontal reach with the, um, with the main boom arm itself and we can split that front knuckle design here and get into configurations like this. So again, allowing the operator to do a lot more with less functions, with fewer functions. Um, You'll also notice that we've got uh, holes in the side of the fly boom. And we've done that for a reason. One of the, the main features of this machine is the gross weight. Of, as I've mentioned, we can get two on a truck. This is one way that we've been able to accommodate it. Um, typically, in a design like this, where you're looking at um, out and over type reach situations, um, the amount of weight that you have in your structure out here is multiplied about five, maybe even seven times by the time you get to the counterweight needed to balance that weight out. Uh, so by removing some weight where it's not needed on the sides of the, the fly boom, we're able to save approximately 70 pounds out of the boom arm, translates down to close to 400 pounds of, of counterweight. So that's one of the main reasons why we're able to get um, the gross weight of this machine down under that 22.5 mark where it would be, um, we're now able to get it on, to get two on a truck. Um, as far as the open center knuckle riser design, a little bit in innovative feature for Skyjack here. So as I mentioned, we're splitting that riser into two sections. And you'll notice that we're using two lift cylinders for the riser function. So what that allows us to do is, is get a little bit more of a rigid feel, allows us to stack the riser components, get a much more compact design and when the machine is stowed, it's a lot shorter than other 60-foot articulating booms that are on the market right now, giving the operator a lot more visibility when he's in a stowed transport mode, getting from point A to point B on a job site. Uh, he's going to have a lot more visibility just by lifting the jib up. Okay, so we've repositioned the machine yet again. Um, here we get a much better look at uh, some of the effort that we went through from the engineering phase of the machine to, again, get that weight down optimize the structure of the machine, um, take weight out where it's not necessary. Um, and one of the things we can see here is with the fly boom fully extended, uh, you can see how much weight we've actually been able to take out of it. This is not a new concept in aerial equipment, um, but typically only used on much bigger equipment where your gross weight overall 
uh, becomes much more of an issue. Uh, so we're doing this to allow us not just to get one on a truck, but to get two on a truck. One of the big differences. So again, same concept, we're just taking it to the next level. Um, as far as these holes go, one of the things that, that pop into mind is a hazardous environment type situation. Maybe you're doing some shipyard work, some sandblasting. You want to make sure that you protect your cylinders. So we do have a hostile environment package, which would include cylinder bellows for all of the cylinders. It would include boom wipers for the uh, go on the end of the main boom. And it would also include uh, aluminum covers as well for these holes in the side. And you can see we've got on the standard machine, pre-drilled, tapped, ready to go um, for that option to be fitted. In this configuration as well, you'll notice that the operator has the ability to get out of the platform. So the riser right now in this configuration is at full height. If the operator were to lift up the boom arm to horizontal, he would be at 40 feet of reach from the chassis, uh, from the center point of the chassis, and he would be at a clearance of 27 foot 2 inches. Um, very class competitive as far as the spec goes. But one of the big features of this machine and this design is, again, the overall productivity of it, the ability for the operator to get into this position, to get in a below horizontal position, and now he can actually operate this machine more like a stick boom, go from ground to full height all the way to almost 70 feet working height uh, with just the main boom function and no other uh, joystick function control at all. Um, so we're able to do this, and, and the time for it is depending on how you have your ramp set, is gonna be somewhere in the mid, uh, mid 30s to low 40s as far as is your actual boom speed time to get from ground level up to the 63 foot seven inch platform height. Okay, so now we're at the platform end of the machine uh, where I'll finish up talking about the features and benefits of the, the new 63AJ. Uh, here we have our common uh, modular platform design. Um, how we design the platform is you'll notice that the railings are all bolted in. Um, you can actually unbolt the railings from the platform and replace individual sections of railing. So very similar to the concept and theory behind our fiberglass cowlings, we do this so that the branches that, are, that own and operate the equipment have the ability to make small repairs that are less costly in a lot of cases will avoid those awkward conversations with their customers who damage the rails. And we all know that railings get damaged on boom lifts. Uh, it's not always the customer's fault, um, but they do need to be replaced. And if we can make that as easy to do as possible, taking up less space in the rental company's parts warehouse um, and also making it quicker to do. So the modular platform railing system is something we brought across from the other the other boom lift models. Now one of the things that we're doing with this machine, which is new, is we've gone with a slightly different platform configuration. So here you'll see our optional six foot platform. Standard would be an eight foot wide platform, but it would also be a tri-entry drop bar. Um, so the standard configuration on this model machine, which we're gonna now take into our other boom lift models and make common across the board is to have three entrances that are all drop bars. And if you want a gate, you can get a gate as optional now. Um, we've done that because there has been demand for multiple entrance points, depending on what you're doing with the application. As far as you can see, this machine here is equipped with our optional pipe racks, which can hold up to 230 pounds of pipe securely, um, giving some productive, added productivity to the operator. We also have a glazer package, which is optional and will get bolted onto the front kick plate. It can be interchangeable with any boom lift that you have, so you don't need to buy it. Um, dedicated to, to one serial number machine. We make it as a kit that can be put on any boom lift model, interchangeable with old platform designs as well. Um, so you can imagine when you have either pipe or glass or board panels on the front of the machine, now you can no longer get access to this entrance, so you would want to use one of the side entrances. And again, you can see the detail of the modular platform railing system. Also optional on this machine is the side gate entrance. Um, so I am talking about drop bars, but obviously not on this uh, specific machine. Um, so this one was equipped with an optional side gate, which makes it easy for the operator to get in and out of. You'll notice that there's only one entrance when you go with the gate, the gate is a little bit more costly. Uh, so that's why we, we burden the option as opposed to burdening the base machine. All steel construction, 
Very robust design. Um, even with the platform control box, you can see here we've got um, an aluminum or metal uh, design. So again, do that for robustness. It is detachable uh, with very little effort, so you can unbolt four bolts and disconnect your, your main connections. You'd be able to take this to a bench if you needed to do some work on it. Um, the control boxes for all of our booms, whether it be our 40, 60 foot stick family booms, um, or 46 AJ, all have the exact same shell. The only thing that'll be different, slightly different, would be the controls. So controls will be common on all of our articulating boom models where you're gonna have a riser function here. You have your main boom and your turret rotate function here, multi-axis joystick and your drive and steer. One of the, the innovative things that Skyjack has done on all of our boom lifts in the past is we have a direction sensing drive and steer control. So what that means is when a turret is positioned or rotated um, off of the normal front um, position, the controls are always going to remain in the orientation of the operator. So as I'm sitting here now, I know which way it's going to be going. Uh, we're slightly off uh, center, so I know that if I go forward, the machine's going to go that way. If I go reverse, it's going to go that way. And if I steer left or right, uh, the machine will steer left or right based on the orientation of the operator. So even in a complex situation like this, where you're near perpendicular to the machine, you'll notice there's no colored arrows on either the control box or the chassis that you have to worry about decoding and trying to figure out which direction you're going to go. And if you're always, if you're ever a little bit unsure, you just end up steering a little bit, you can identify which way the, the controls are oriented. Um, as far as the overall control box itself, you'll notice we use very simple toggle switch controls. Do that for a number of reasons. Um, very inexpensive replacement part. They do get banged up. Obviously, the people that are renting this equipment are trying to work, so they're going to have tools. They may rest their tools here, which is the easiest place to do it, may damage it. Um, but one of the other reasons we do it as well is they're easy to grab. Even if you have welding gloves or winter gloves on, you're going to be able to properly grab and manipulate all the controls of the machine. Um, as I talked earlier, the operator control diff lock, you can see here. Um, this would be unique on the AJ machines and a little unable light which will show you whether or not it's locked. The machine is going to be naturally in the unlocked or open differential position. And if you stop the machine, stop driving, even after you've enabled it, you'll notice the light will go out so it defaults back to um, the open position which would obviously cause a lot less tire scrubbing, give you a much tighter turning radius. Um, turning radius on this machine is actually, even for an axle based uh, machine, leading the class at just over seven feet of an inside uh, turn radius. So very competitive class leading as far as all the two wheel steer um, models out in the, in the industry right now. As far as other platform options go, I mentioned the productivity options such as the pipe rack and the glazer kit. Uh, we have the different platform sizes and gate and entrance configurations. Uh, but we also have some power to platform type options. We have a 3500 watt hydraulic generator, uh, which would give you power to your 110 um, outlet here. Uh, we also have a welder ready and a welder package, which you can get, which would give you a single phase and three phase power uh, to allow you to connect up a up to 275 amp um, stick welder. And the welder would actually that bracket would bolt in right to this section here and be part of um, that railing assembly. So you'd have your welder be able to plug it in and now you have a full functioning portable welder.